So here's a look at the cardigan we're going to be crocheting today. Now this is the toddler size version of this cardigan, but you can crochet this in any size you want. You will need to take some measurements in order to crochet this, and I'm going to list the measurements you're going to need to take on this screen. For your cardigan length, measure from the top of your shoulder to your hip. For the width of it, you're going to measure your shoulder, bust, chest, waist, and hip, and use whichever one of those measurements is the widest. You'll need to take the circumference, so measure all the way around. For your sleeve length, you're going to need to bend your elbow and measure from the top of your shoulder to your wrist. To get the width of the armhole, it's going to be a circumference measurement, so measure around the widest part of your arm. Now let's talk about materials. You can use whatever yarn weight you want to crochet this. Um, just, you know, go with whatever the recommended hook size is. So your label will have that somewhere on here. Swatch it out and then just kind of play around with your fabric and go with that. You are going to need two different types of hooks. Um, so I'm using a Tunisian corded hook. You can use a straight hook, but the sleeves are going to be torture. So, you know, use a corded hook and spare yourself. I also used a regular uh, crochet hook to do all of these little trimmings. Now, the sizing of these hooks will depend on what size yarn you use. I used a DK yarn for this, so it's a size 3 or lightweight, and a 5mm corded hook with a 4mm regular hook. So make sure your regular hook is at least 1mm smaller than your, uh, your corded hook. Um, but yeah, so that's that. Uh, as far as how much yarn you're going to need... You're going to be able to calculate that on your own. Yeah, in fact, you're going to have to because I don't provide that in any at all in this tutorial or in the written pattern, but I show you how to do it. There's a video right up here. Click on that and you can, you know, learn to calculate your yardage for this project and any other crochet project you have. Um, so I go, I go in detail for, you know, how to do that. So, you know, go check that out. Um, but yes, so what, what else? That's it. Let's just get started with this thing. Okay, before we get started with this pattern, I wanted to show you guys something. Um, well, let me just show you and then we'll go from there. So this is the vest for my cardigan. So here it is. It looks nice and pretty until you get to the argyle section. Now, as you can tell, there are some dips in here. Now let's look at it with the fabric flat and we'll talk a little bit more about it and how to avoid it before you, know, you actually start crocheting this thing. All right. So as you can see, there's a lot of waving at the bottom part of my cardigan and then the, all this little like bubbling up at the top. This results from a change in tension. So what's happening here is the tension is tighter in this argyle section because I'm using two colors. So when you're juggling with two colors to try to create a design like this, like here's what the back looks like, it's very difficult to regulate your tension and to keep it even throughout especially if you're working over, um, working on this over the course of multiple days like I did. Um, you'll get you know a particular tension for one section and then you might tighten it more with the next day or whatever it is depending on, well, a lot of factors. So in order to avoid this particular issue or to remedy it in case you, know, you wanna do kind of like what I'm doing, there are two different methods I recommend. So for this whole section, I used one hook size. So I don't know, it was like five millimeter or something like that, that I used for this sweater. And I used it throughout. So I did the argyle pattern and all of this with the same hook size. Now, once you're done with the vest, you can block it. So if this is something that really bothers you, I'm not gonna block it before continuing on with the rest of the project. And that way you can see what it would look like. But if this section or this is, difference in size bothers you and you want to just take care of it before adding all of the trim and the sleeves and all of that, finish the vest and before you stitch the top part, wash it by hand, lay it flat and block it and set it up the way you want it to be before sewing it. And then you can move on with the rest of the pattern once it dries. Now, if you don't want to have to deal with that at all, another method you can use is if you start with Again, say a five millimeter hook or whatever it is the recommended hook size your yarn label gives you, right? So let's go with five. You begin your initial chain, your foundation rows, and then the first few rows down at the bottom, begin those with a five millimeter hook. When you get to the argyle pattern, go up one millimeter. So I would use a six millimeter hook to crochet this argyle section. Then I would go back to my five millimeter hook for this top part. What that'll do is creates more spacing between the stitching and it releases a little bit more of that tension. So instead of having all of this waviness at the bottom, you'll end up with either no waviness 
or a lot less, which once you end up with something like this, it's a lot easier to get rid of it once you do like the bottom elastic or trimming or whatever it is we're gonna do to finish this off. You can fix that very easily. But if you have a lot of scrunch kind of like this one, it becomes a little more difficult and you might have to compensate with a different combination of stitches here on the end or an extra row here to kind of pull this a little bit more taut. So I wanted to address this before you get into this pattern um, so you can plan accordingly and decide whether you need a different hook so that you can use the two different hook sizes or whether you need pins and something else to maybe um, to do the blocking. So there we go. Uh, I've shown you this. Now we can go ahead and uh, tackle this beast. So let's go over how to read the chart real quick. Now, the chart is included if you purchase the full pattern, or you can buy the chart by itself if you want to as well without purchasing the full pattern. Um, but that's available on my website. I'll put all the links down in the description box. But let's take a look at it real quick. I've got two sets of numbers here at the base, and that's for whoever's crocheting like right-handed, you'd read it in this direction. If you're left-handed, you go in this direction. So I'm crocheting right-handed, so I'm gonna instruct going this way. So now, the colors are also inverted, so all of this light stuff is gonna be my burgundy color, and these is it's gonna be in darker. That's because I use this chart for a ton of other projects here on the channel. So, I mean, you can see how worn this poor little piece of paper is. <laughs> I use it for a ton of projects, so I didn't change the chart. It's the same chart, so if you purchased it for the Argyle scarf or anything else, you already have it. Um, so let's move on. Okay, so I'm gonna leave it right over here so you can see it. And let's go this way. So as you can see, the first stitch of our chart is going to be a color switch. So I've crocheted my five rows already, and I've left the last stitch of my return pass so that I can do my color switch here. So let's grab this lighter yarn, leave a nice long tail end, and pull that through. All right, so that is our first stitch of the row. It is already in white. So all we do is go into stitch number two, which is gonna be in the burgundy. And we have to do, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven stitches in burgundy. So we drop our white yarn, pick up the burgundy, and hope it's not all tangled. There we go. And crochet our seven stitches. So one, six, seven. We have one color switch to white and then another seven stitches. So we drop the burgundy, pick up the white, crochet one stitch, drop, pick up burgundy, and do seven. So it's one, two, six, seven. And there we go. We do still have this last stitch, but I'll talk about it here in just a moment. So you would repeat this as many times as you need in order to complete the width of your cardigan or the the length of your chain so once you complete this these seven stitches you would begin right back here at the beginning of the uh, chart and keep going so we got to stitch number 16 i go back to one which is a white one so i would switch color pick it up again and then repeat when you get to the end of the row you should be left with this one last stitch you're going to do a repeat of row of stitch number one so we want it to start and end the same. So we're gonna end it with the white stitch. That's why this last stitch, you're just going to do whatever it was your first stitch of the row was. You're just gonna repeat that. So in this case, I'm gonna switch my color and there's the completion of my Argyle. So now for the return pass, you have to use the yarn that corresponds with the loop on your hook. So our first stitch is white, or I guess off white technically. So we're gonna yarn over and pull through one. So from here on out, we're gonna pay attention to this second vertical stitch or the second loop, I guess, on our hook. And because it's burgundy, we're gonna to switch to the burgundy yarn. And now we complete the return pass with yarn over, pull through two. This second stitch is also burgundy, so yarn over, pull through two. And we go to until we get to our color switch. So right here, our second loop is now in um, the off-white color. So we're gonna switch yarn to off-white and then switch again. Something to keep in mind is the tension. You're gonna have to just play with tension for a while and get really comfortable with this. Uh, I wish I could tell you there was a trick for how to do this a little more easily. I have yet to find it. You're just gonna have to be very patient and keep a really loose tension. 
on your work, um, especially because when you're doing color switches, your fabric is gonna compress even further. So make sure you leave this very loose. Yes, you're gonna have all of these threads kind of sticking out, but I'll show you how to take care of it towards the end of the video. So now that we're at the end of the row, before you do this last return pass, go back to your chart and see what the, co um, the color of your first stitch for the next row. So we're gonna go up to row number two, and it's gonna have to be in burgundy. So instead of doing my uh, return pass in the off-white, I have to switch to burgundy to make sure that my very first stitch, which is this one, is in the same color as the chart. So our first stitch is now in burgundy. Our second stitch needs to be in off-white. So we switch yarn, go to off-white, and again, keep a really loose attention when you switch colors. And we go back to our chart. So we should only have, I think it's five, one, two, three, four, yep. So we have five stitches in burgundy, three in off-white, five in burgundy, and then we continue. So we have all of our stitches here in burgundy, which I need more yarn. There you go, so it's one, two, three, four, and five. We need three in off-white. So it's one, two, three, and then another five in white, or sorry, burgundy. I don't know my colors apparently. So it's three, four, five. And then we do a color switch to burgundy to match the very first stitch of our row. We go and now we go to our return pass so yarn over pull through one and we switch color so yarn over pull through two switch color and then we just continue until we complete the row so that's how you would read the chart um if you have any questions on it or anything feel free to leave it down in the comment section you would just continue to work the chart as uh as written uh until you complete your argyle section so you can slowly see that, you know, our pattern starts taking shape. Things to keep in mind, always pay attention to your chart. Don't just, you know, ignore it for a second because something that happened to me a lot actually was I'd skip one of these squares. So I'd miss a color change and it would throw off this whole thing. I ended up having to frog this particular section of the pattern several times and actually sit there with the chart going step by step. Something you can do is, you know, you can use a post-it. I try to keep this as small, but still visible as possible, but you can stick a post-it on there and mark off where your row is so that you don't lose track of it. If you're to set your project down, it's very easy to lose your tension. So that's what I'm saying. Just keep it nice and loose and try to keep it at about the same throughout the entire section. All right, so complete this Argyle section and then we'll continue with the rest of our cardigan. When you complete the argyle section, continue to crochet rows of Tunisian simple stitch until the length of your fabric is the same as your hip to armpit measurement. Once you complete the length you need, you're gonna divide your fabric into four equal parts, and this is along the width of the fabric. You're gonna combine the two center quarters so that you have one half. So half of your fabric is going to be the back panel, and then the other two halves along the sides are gonna be the two front panels you need for the cardigan. Just so you have a map to where we're headed, this is what the panels are going to look like once we complete them. You're going to have a decrease along both of the front panels to create the neckline. And then once you fold those two sides over, you're going to have a nice little vest. So let's move on to the front panels of our cardigan. Now the first two stitches, you're going to crochet together. So vertical stitch number two and three, you're going to Tunisian simple stitch two together. And then for the rest of the row, you're just gonna simple, uh, Tunisian simple stitch, there we go, in every one of the stitches until you get to your first stitch marker. So remember we left these two stitch markers to mark out the quarter section? Um, get to that very first one and then you're gonna work a return pass and move on to row number two. Row number two is just a regular row of Tunisian simple stitch without the decreases. For the rest of this section, continue alternating between decrease rows and regular Tunisian simple stitch rows. Once you've finished all of your decreases, you're gonna get a fabric that looks a little bit like this. Now, the first thing you need to measure is across the top of the shoulders. So make sure that this is the measurement you need to go from your collar to your shoulder. And then you're also going to need to take the measurement for the armhole. So remember that this is the half of the measurement of your arm cir uh, circumference, excuse me. If these measurements don't quite add up, some troubleshooting. Um, if this is the height that you need, right, for half of your 
arm circumference, but this is too narrow, then you're gonna have to redo this section. And instead of doing your decreases every other row, add a row. So do your decrease and then do two rows of Tunisian crochet without a decrease and decrease every third row. If you have the opposite problem and your fabric is too wide, then you're gonna do your decrease every single row. So that way it becomes a lot more narrow, if that makes sense. So the closer your decreases are spaced, the smaller this section is going to become. So if you need it wider, increase the space here and that'll widen up. Once you have finished this panel, you're gonna work a bind off. All right, so the bind off you're gonna use for this entire project is a little bit different than what we've normally been using in the other tutorials. So for this one, you're always gonna begin on the second stitch of the row, um, but you're gonna take both legs of the stitch and then just cast on a Tunisian simple stitch. And once you have both loops on your hook, you're gonna yarn over and pull through two to close as a single crochet. So this is a front and back leg Tunisian simple stitch single crochet bind off. I know, these names are so long. All right, but again, cast on using both legs of the stitch, just like you would a Tunisian simple stitch. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Once you have two loops on your hook, you're gonna yarn over and pull through both loops. And that's it. So this is gonna close off the top of the rows or the edges of the sleeve or wherever it is that you're doing your bind off. And I'll show you here the edge that it creates. Um, it makes it a lot easier to work on, uh, at least for this type of pattern. So here's what it looks like. So it's gonna give you kind of a wider edge at the bottom in case you need to stitch anything um, along the edges at some point. And here's the top. So if you were to use just a regular Tunisian simple stitch single crochet one, which is what we normally use, that leaves a little bit more spacing. So when you go to stitch your fabric, you're left with a little bit of a gap. So let me show you what that would look like. So this one's a little bit lighter, but it's also got a little bit more spacing, whereas this bottom one is a little bit more closed off. So here you can kind of see the difference. But I mean, you're welcome to use either option. This is the one that uh, I'm gonna be using for the written pattern. So anyone who sees the written pattern, this is what you're going to see. And this is just the bind off for all sections of our project. So at the cuffs of the sleeve, uh, it's gonna be at the top of the vest. So at the shoulders, and at the top of the back panel. This center section is going to be just a regular square, so you're not gonna have any increases, um, I'm sorry, not increases, decreases on either side. So this one is just your regular Tunisian crochet, so just cast on into the next available stitch, which is this one, and then just crochet a few regular, or just a few rows of regular Tunisian. If you leave the stitch markers, it's gonna help you with your row count, so just crochet the same number of rows as you did on your decrease side, and then you'll have uh, a section that's the same size. We're gonna move on to this section because this one has the decreases at the end, and I wanna show you those real quick. It's gonna be very similar to what we just did on this side, only it's gonna happen at the end of the row. So for this, sorry, I know the little bead keeps cl uh, clicking. All right, so we are gonna start on the stitch right after our stitch marker so that we have the same number of stitches on both panels. So we're just gonna cast on, leave a nice long tail end of yarn. You can weave that in later. And then cast on your regular Tunisian simple stitch until you get to the final, what is it? Three stitches of the row. So once you get to this section, we're gonna do our decrease using these last two vertical stitches. And then you're gonna cast on into the final stitch at the, of the row at the end. So when you get to this final section, you're gonna Tunisian simple stitch these two vertical stitches together like we did for the other panel. And then you're just gonna cast on into the final stitch of the row. And that's it. So for here, since this is where we did the decrease, we're gonna also use our stitch markers and then just place one here at the end. Then we can keep track of our rows. So you just work a regular return pass and that's it. Make sure you space out your decreases the same way that you did on this panel. So I spaced mine every other row, which means this row was my decrease, 
My next row is going to be just a row of a regular Tunisian simple stitch without a decrease, and then I'll decrease every other row. If you space these out every third row, whatever you did, just make sure you duplicate it on this side so you end up with the same size decrease on both panels. Once you've completed all three panels of the cardigan, you're going to stitch them up. So remove all of your stitch markers, make sure that you weave in all of your ends, and then you're ready to stitch along the top. Now you're going to notice that your fabric does curl. Don't worry about it. This will go away once you stitch everything. So you don't need to block it before you stitch it. What I do recommend though is once you start stitching, you begin on the outside of the sleeve towards the inside of the neckline to make sure that your panels line up so that the front panel lines up with the back panel. Once these are stitched, we're going to work on the sleeves. So once you've stitched along the top part of the cardigan, so here we go, this is what your little vest is going to look like. Now to do the sleeves for the written pattern um, and for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm just going to be using my corded hook. Now there are other methods you can use to create the sleeves and you can use a double-ended hook. I know this one's really big, it's just the first one I grabbed, um, but you can use double-ended hooks. Now, if you have these longer ones, this is gonna make your sleeve, working with your sleeve very, very difficult. So I highly recommend you, if you enjoy this type of tutorial, to get these smaller ones. These are about, I think it's like three and a half inches long. Uh, I have links to all of these down in the description of the video, but you can get these smaller ones. They make working with smaller things like sleeves and socks a lot easier. And then all you would do is crochet this in the round. I have done this for other patterns, so I'll put a few links or put them up here or something so that you can see how to do the sleeve in the round. Um, I'm not going to do it for this tutorial, so you know we're we're going to be using this one. The only difference between doing the sleeve with this corded hook and then this other one is that one with this hook it's going to lay flat, and we're going to have a seam along the bottom of the sleeve. If you don't like the extra seam, that's when you would use uh, just the hook and work in the round. You are going to need two skeins, hanks, cakes, whatever it is you're using, because you're going to need to cast on with one and you need to close off the return pass with another. So you can't use one thread. If you prefer to only work with one thread, then go with the corded hook. Just go with the one-sided hook as opposed to the double-ended hook. Anyway, I'll do another project in which I use this for the sleeve, but you know, for this one, we're going to stick with this type of hook. All right, so to begin to cast on for our sleeve, I'm going to begin here at the bottom because I want the seam to be under the, the bottom part of the sleeve, right? So I usually pick just the centermost stitch. This is the stitch I'm going to start and stop on. So I don't want too much of a gap between these stitches because otherwise it's going to make the seam even more visible and it's going to pull tightly on the sleeve. So I want to start just on the centermost stitch. And then we're going to cast on along this edge. So these stitches right up here. So just pull a long tail of thread through. You can weave that in later. And then just begin your cast on. Don't skip any stitches and make sure that you count them. Just so that when you work on your second sleeve, you have you can assure you have, you have the same number of stitches and you won't end up with one sleeve that's wider than the other one. But go through, just cast on like you see here, all the way around. It is going to become a little more difficult to start casting on towards this side of the sleeve. Um, you know, do the best you can. <laughs> just play with the fabric a little. It'll work out. But just go through, cast on, and I'll see you here in just a moment. All right. Once you've got this entire section cast on, you just work a regular return pass. So it's just the yarn over, pull through one, and then yarn over, pull through two for the rest of the project. Once you've completed your foundation row, you just begin casting on your Tunisian simple stitch. As you're working your way around, which is going to be, I should have mentioned this probably for when you were doing your foundation row, but as you're working your way around and it starts getting a little bit tighter and a little more difficult to cast on your stitches, if you have one of these corded hooks, it's a lot easier to just pull your stitching onto the cord itself. Then you can continue to cast on the stitches without having to have so much um, pressure on your hook as you are working. So you just go through, cast on the rest of these stitches, and once you have all of the stitches on your hook and you've completed the row, you can pull all of these stitches that were on the cord, everything back onto the hook, and then work your return pass. Before moving on to the rest of the sleeve, let's take a look at the sleeve you see on the screen right now and talk about decrease placement. Now, the decreases are gonna determine the taper on your sleeve so that you end up with a wider sleeve at the armhole and a nicer fitted uh, cuff. So. 
I placed my decreases on every 10th row. Now, depending on how much of a taper you want, if you want a narrower, tighter fitting uh, cuff, place it on every eighth row. If you want a wider cuff, place it on every 12th row. You can also play around with this. Just make sure you jot down where you placed your increase, or not your increases, your decreases. The only place it was different was at the beginning of the sleeve, so closest to, towards the shoulder. I cast on a foundation row, and then I did four rows of Tunisian simple stitch. I placed my first decrease at row five. And again, this is because I did my decreases on every 10th row. If you're doing it on every eighth row, then cast on a foundation row, do three rows of Tunisian simple stitch, and begin your first decrease on row four. From then on out, space them to every eighth row. You did similar for 12 rows, only you do five rows of Tunisian simple stitch, and your first decrease at row six, and then continue on to every 12th row. To work the decreases at the beginning of the row, you're gonna Tunisian simple stitch the second and third vertical stitch together. And then Tunisian simple stitch until you get towards the end of the row. When you reach the last two vertical stitches of the row, so here's the final stitch, you're gonna Tunisian simple stitch these two vertical stitches together and then cast on into the final stitch. And that's gonna give you the decrease at the end of the sleeve or at the end of the row. For the rest of your sleeve, space out your decreases, how we talked about at the beginning of the section, whether it's row eight, 10, or 12. Once your sleeve has reached your desired length, crochet a bind off, and then we're gonna move on to the cuff, which is crocheted exactly the same as the hem and the trim, which I'll show you how to do here in just a second. All right, so now we get to this section of the cardigan. And as you can see, I did not block my pattern at all. I wanted to see what it was gonna look like and be able to show you guys. So this is what it looks like if you did not block before starting everything else. Um, so, I mean, I can still block it at this point, uh, but you know, now you see what it looks like and you can plan accordingly um, in case you do need to block and you're just gonna do just a traditional, you wet the garment and then just kind of pin it down allow yourself an extra day or two so that your garment can dry before you continue on with the rest of your project. All right, so let's talk about all of these little details. So we've already done the cuffs for the sleeves and now we're getting to the part where we're gonna do the hem, which I'll show you how to start that here in just a moment. And you're gonna do the trim along the neckline. So for this, we're gonna use my small little swatch. So the bottom of your sweater is gonna have an edge just like this one. So this is what, what it looks like when you did your foundation row. And then your sides are gonna look like this. These are gonna be cast on differently for your single crochet edging. And this is single crochet all throughout. So if you're a little bit more advanced, just start at the hem, um, work your way around so that when you do the trim here on the side, it just goes straight down. Um, so, well, at least that's what I did. You can move it around however you want. But this is just a few rows of single crochet. The width is really, it, that just depends on you. So however wide you want this bottom part to be, go for it. Since this is for a small child, I didn't make it too big. If it were to be for an adult, I might've gone with maybe about two inches. This is what, just shy of an inch. So, you know, you have options here. The same goes for the neckline. If you wanted to continue this and make this a lot wider, you can make it so that it folds over like that. You would just have to make it much, much wider. So you need, I don't know, a minimum of like four inches or so to make it so that it folds over. But that's a stylistic choice. I'm just going to show you how to do this basic part. And then from then on out, you can just, you know, run and make it your own. And then we're going to go over how you're going to cover this inside section so that you don't lose any of your threading or you don't, you know, this section doesn't get caught on anything. But let's move on to this section. Here, I'm going to cover this so it stops distracting us. Okay, so for the hem, all you're gonna do is just cast on using a single crochet. So I'm using a smaller hook for all of these little details. So the hook I used for the sweater was a five millimeter. I'm using, what is this, a four millimeter for, and this is the double-sided hook. This is just the only four millimeter hook I hand on hand. So um, just a regular crochet hook will work just fine. You're no longer using this for Tunisian. So any um, crochet hook will do. So when you're along the bottom, yes, it is going to curl, but as you can see here, 
it starts, the curl starts to go away as you add the single crochets. You might still get some curl in the corners and you'll probably have to um, lay this flat while it's wet and then just pin it down so that it dries straight um, to add a little bit more weight. But as far as the curl for the rest of the fabric, it completely clears out once you add your edging. So for this, all you do is turn your work around and you cast on just a regular single crochet. So because this is an advanced video, we're not gonna get too far into it. So I'll just show you here a little bit. And this is just for the hem of the sweater. So just find the stitching and the stitching is gonna be between your vertical stitches. Oh, there we go, I'm off camera. So skip the vertical stitch and go into the spacing between your two vertical stitches. That's where you're gonna find your stitch. And you just insert your hook and single crochet all the way around. All right, when you get to the end of your, to the end of the row, I can't speak, you are gonna chain one, turn your work around and begin on the very first stitch of the row and just single crochet all the way across again. So repeat this as many times as you want to create the width of your hem. Now for this side part, we're gonna cast on just a little differently than we did here for your single crochet. So instead of using the vertical stitches, so I'll just pull these out. So the side of your fabric is gonna look like this. So instead of using just the stitch and going in the way we did this way, we're going to use the post. So I'll show you here on one of these center ones. So you're gonna go into your stitch this way. And what this is gonna do is create this little edge that just pops a little bit more. So if you want something that looks a little bit more flat, you can use the stitch that we used down here at the bottom. So cast on the same way, just between the vertical stitches. That'll work. It's gonna leave a little bit wider spacing than this section, but um, yeah. So I just went through the post and it created this little ridge, which I thought was very nice. So that's what I went with. Anyway, so the very first one you do cast on just as a regular single crochet. And then beginning from the second stitch on, just insert your hook behind the post of the stitch and single crochet and then repeat. And then at the end, you're going to work a stitch into the last post and also into the space between the final post and the very edge of your fabric just to create a nice clean corner at which point you chain one turn your work around and then you just begin a regular single crochet as of the first stitch of the row and then you do the same just crochet as many rows of single crochet as you want to create the width that you want for all of the trimmings now, the way you would work this is if you are um, right-handed, begin on the left side of the cardigan so that you hold your fabric this way and you can see the little ridge on the outside. Otherwise, the ridge is gonna poke out like this along the outside. So it's gonna, it's gonna poke it out a little bit. If you are a left-handed crocheter, begin on the right side of the fabric so you crochet in this direction. Now, once you get to this section where your decreases ended, or I guess when your decreases began, sorry, for this top section, you just continue to crochet the same. It's just the single, um, the single crochet all the way around. So you begin at this corner, go all the way around, and then just turn around and go the other way. So back and forth until you create the width. Once that you want. all of that is done, I'm going to create a small edge of, well, a small piece of fabric, not a small edge, a small piece of fabric just in single crochet to somewhat match the interior of the, the cardigan along the inside, just to cover all of this up. So you're gonna create a small piece of fabric and then sew it on along the edges. So to cast that on, we have that little ridge that we created here 
on the inside of the sweater. So I'm going to begin just a little bit outside of where um, all of the strings are. So go up here. And then just a single crochet across. So and the reason I'm doing it as a single crochet and not as a Tunisian stitching, you can if you want to, you can cast on a row of Tunisian stitching and then just make another piece of fabric like this. It uses twice the amount of fabric because you have your fabric for your cast on and then, not fabric, uh, thread. So you have the thread for the cast on and then the thread for the return pass. So it's twice the amount of thread. Um, it's still going to be about as equally lightweight. So it's, it's more of a stylistic choice. I just don't want to have to use as much thread for the interior of the cardigan if I don't need to. So, and this is also much quicker to crochet than doing a whole row of single, or not single, of a uh, Tunisian simple stitch. So anyway, you're going to crochet a, a row of single crochet all along this bottom part. Once you get to the end, you're just going to turn your work around, begin at the first stitch of the row, and work your way back. From the second row on, you're not going to crochet them onto the sweater itself. It's going to be a loose piece of fabric that we are later going to sew on here. So I'll crochet this section and show you what I mean. All right, so here's a look at that single crochet strap that I've crocheted to cover up all of these fibers. So just lay this on flat, make sure that it goes all the way across and that it isn't taut. You want it to be nice and loose because you are you might have to stretch this a little to cover these fibers. So once this is all set, I'm gonna single crochet it along the edge right here. You can also stitch it if you prefer, but I'm just gonna single crochet across. And then after that, I'll go through and stitch along the sides. So just line this up. and single crochet across.